Summit.org. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to walk you through creating a basic ping monitor using Splunk and a simple bash script. So first we're going to go through and create a bash script that'll send some pings out, record those to a file, and then we're going to pick those files up with Splunk and monitor them in real time. So let's start off by creating our bash script. So the first thing we're going to do before we do that is create a couple folders. We're going to create a pings folder and we're going to create a targets folder inside of that. So we're going to copy paste the bash script in and what the bash script does is it actually kills every ping job running by this user. Um, it's every process with the word ping in it and then it starts a new set of pings writing to the files and outputs the process numbers for future reference. And now we're going to change the file permission to make our script executable. And then we're going to run the script. Once we have the script running, we are going to use the tail command. And what the tail command will do is allow us to continuously update and uh, look at the last 10 lines of one of our output files, specifically the Google DNS.txt and it's showing us the ping results as they're being written to the file. So we know that our script is running, we're getting our pings, they're being written to the file, so now we're ready to bring it into Splunk. I'm going to quickly create a cron job to start this every 30 minutes, and by restarting the script, uh, the script's actually set up to kill all the pings and restart them, and that'll flush out our log files so we don't fill up the drive. So now we're installing Splunk, um, which is pretty straightforward, just using dpackage, tag i, and the name of the Splunk package and we'll go through the installation, that goes pretty quick, and now we're going to start the uh, Splunk executable, and once we fire that up, it's going to give us a big long license agreement that we have to agree to, so we'll read every single character very carefully, and then agree to that. So we see Splunk starting up, it's creating the key for the first time, and it's showing us that it's going to be available on port 8000. Uh, by default, SSL's turned off, so it's just an HTTP connection. I'm just using it locally on a lab network, so I'm not extremely worried about SSL right now, but if you're putting this in any sort of production environment, you probably will care about that. So we're going to connect to the host, we're going to log in for the first time, and take a look at the interface. So logging on for the first time, our default credentials are the username admin, password change me, and this is just for the enterprise license. If you use the free license, and you can downgrade it after the install if you want, or just wait for the enterprise trial to run out, this login screen will go away. It's one of the features that times out when you're done with the enterprise trial. So here's our interface. We're going to add data. The type of data we're going to add is going to be a monitor location. We're looking at files. We're going to add uh, the files and directories section. We'll browse for our directory. Put that under my home folder and in the pings folder. And we're going to look at the whole targets directory. So any file that lands in the targets directory, we want Splunk to ingest. So we can use the default input settings. We don't need to get too fancy here. It does a pretty good job with ping files. And we're going to use the default index. Uh, you might want to do a custom index if you're going to have a lot of different inputs down the road. So let's take a look, see if it's pulling it in. Now we look, we see our ping results, and we are getting the data inside Splunk. So now that we're getting our data in Splunk, we're going to use the query that I have in the notes, and we're going to do a search that's grabbing all the ping results from one host and push it over to the time chart function. From there, we're going to look at the average of the time field value. And that's giving us this graph. And when I set the graph to show in five minutes real time, it's continuously updating, giving us uh, the ping response time in milliseconds for that one particular host. So now I'm going into the X and Y axis properties and turning the title off. I'm also going to turn the legend off because I want a little bit more screen real estate on my dashboard. So let's save this as a new dashboard panel. And we'll put all of our charts on the same dashboard panel, so only the first one will be a new dashboard panel. And I like to name the panel after the host that's pinging, just for reference. 
And then once we're done with this, we'll have created our dashboard view and we can add the rest of our host to this dashboard. After we add all our hosts to the dashboard, we get this view. So we have three external hosts and our default gateway, and then the graph on top is showing all of them at once for comparison. To create the graph on top, I used a slightly different query that's also in the notes. Essentially, I changed the source to include all the sources in our targets folder. I also added a line after the time chart formula to sort by source, which organizes it by each individual host as well. So that's our quick network monitor with Splunk. It's not going to replace your enterprise network monitor, but it is pretty useful. It will give you historical data, and it's pretty easy to set up. Thanks for watching.